Welcome. Uh, thank you, everyone. We're here and we have the pleasure of being here with Mr. Neeraj Sharan, CEO and Chairman of Aura. Welcome, uh, Neeraj. Such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Trisha. It's good to be here. And uh, Horasis has been a play that I have been doing since 2009. It's good to be here. One of the pioneer members, absolute pleasure. 16th uh, Horasis uh, India Meet. Yes, uh, for sure. I mean, I, I remember the first time I came to Horasis was in Munich, 2009. And I think I must have attended almost 18. And not just the Global India Meet, but also the Global Horasis Meet, the Global Arab Meet, the Global Southeast Asia Meet. We had yeah. one in Kolkata as well. And I've seen the transformation of quality insights and white papers that we talk about. Yeah. I must give it to Frank for having done a super job. And what is some of the evolution, you know, given you're one of the pioneer members, what are some of the changes that you've seen? I mean, of course, the world has changed quite a lot, but with Horasis, uh, what are some of the changes you've seen? So one of the things that I've seen about Horasis, which is the highest point I give to Frank about it, is that he has been consistent and he has maintained that boutique personal touch uh, congregation that's mm -hmm. so difficult. Yeah. Uh, we come here uh, every year, we congregate. It's not just about the thought processes and what we talk about, uh, white papers for the future, et cetera, et cetera. It's also the relationship that we carry forward and of take course. with us. Yeah. And I've known people, I'm meeting people after five years, four years, six years, and it's just awesome. No, absolutely. And especially now with the geopolitical environment, the way that it is, there's so much uncertainty. In fact, uh, 2024 is the year that we have the most number of elections happening uh, all across the world. What are your two cents, you know, having uh, come to harass as being such an illustrious leader, what are your two cents on what should be the most top of mind uh, for people around the world, for leaders around the world? I would say that there are two aspects of it. One aspect is the geopolitical undercurrents that we see in the last couple of years. Uh, some of the players in the world are okay to have a bipolar world, mm -hmm. but they want a unipolar Asia. Yeah. And to me, that is something that uh, is a very far-fetched and unpractical uh, looking forward. Uh, I think India is on the rise. So is uh, other countries from Asia, mm -hmm. Indonesia, Malaysia. We got to have players come on board and have a stake and a voice mm. in today's world going forward. So I think that's, that's number one. Of I course. think this, this old model of going forward with institutions that were there, I think they served a purpose. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not gonna go into anything else, but I think we need to really look forward yeah. to some new institutions both because of the shift in geopolitical, economic and political power, but also because of the new technologies that of have course. come in. Uh, as an example, if I may tell you, we had United Nations Security Council, we had WHO for health or yes. whatever. Uh, we are at a inflection point in humanity with this uh, disruption coming from AI. Yeah. Uh, it's a monster, it's a good thing, uh, how it's going to pan out, where is the legislation, Yes. where is the policy advocacy, and where does the power lie in terms of uh, making sure things are going right. Yeah. This is what I carry every day a thought in my mind. And if we don't do it now, it may not have the best benefits that we think humanity can have because of AI. So that's my... And do you believe at a time like that, it's not just... Uh, like you mentioned, you know, we had we had WHO, we had the United Nations. Now, is it much more important than ever to have the pl the public, the private partnerships coming together? Because to your point, who is responsible for these legislations? And you know, it has to really be almost everyone's responsibility, wouldn't you say, uh, to play a part? I do think so. I mean, look at what happened. Social media is a great tool. Mm -hmm. Uh, it started off with getting on a platform and connecting with your friends and family that you never met for a long time. To see who was eating what every morning. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then very soon it became uh, so penetrative in our lives 
And then it started to become, I think, a little toxic. Mm -hmm. And it started to become very divisive. Yeah. And, uh, and there was no legislation, truly. Anyone could upload anything from anywhere. And uh, with this technology feed coming in, then we are open to being sucked in a certain way. Now, I think AI is, is actually uh, social media on steroids if mm. you're not careful. Yeah. So we have a huge opportunity of doing great things for humanity, but the perils of doing it right is here. And I really think as leaders in, in, in business or leaders mm. in political sphere or heads of families, all of us owe it yeah. to put together a wisdom and mm -hmm. come together and exhibit that leadership to make sure that we don't add to any propagation that we don't feel is right. Yeah. I think that's a good starting point. Yeah. You don't add to the propagation yeah. if something is wrong. Absolutely. That's where it start, we start to do that, Trisha. Yes. I think it'll be a different world. And for leaders of tomorrow, you know, and I think you mentioned that, what are some of the challenges that you see for leaders of tomorrow? And how can they best arm themselves with the right tools, with the right mindset? in order to be ready and to, to create the organizations uh, that you have created, for example? It's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I, I think I, I wish I had a simpler answer to it. And we, we look at all this stuff all the time hmm. because the pace at which things are happening is, sure. is crazy. Faster than ever. Faster than ever. And it's not just technology. I think it's also the social behavior that, has, that is changing rapidly. Uh, the new workforce globally is the Gen Z mm -hmm. and uh, the mindset of people of what the engagement time is, is coming from minutes to seconds, seconds and yes. now I don't know where it's going. So how do you make sure that in this changing world where, uh, where, where the attention span is dropping uh, and, and then there are workforces, work from home, work from anywhere, work anytime. And multi-generational. Multi-generational. multi multi-location, multi to your point. But I do believe that at the end of it, we must not forget that we're all human beings. Hmm. And some of this cognitive behaviors that we always had, I think at some level still exists. Hmm. Everyone needs to get the sense of being cared, yes. of being appreciated, of being wanted mm. and as leaders if we could bring that on within our next level of CXOs or the next level and they in turn do it mm. I think that to me is by far the most impacting and unfortunately with the new leadership that we all have we get under pressure we tend to move away from this yeah. but I think we need to get back to some fundamentals more so in today's time uh, than ever uh, relationships uh, caring, empathy, and uh, get your hand dirty. You so do the importance that. of fundamentals, as yes. you said, in the time of uncertainty. That's Absolutely. really lovely. I think that's what I think is, at least I would advocate that strongly. I've seen Fantastic. that change. Uh, because fundamentally, all of us have the same needs in life. Brilliant. No, that was really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you Good very much. Thank you.